Welcome to the Unbounded podcast series, where we help you attain new levels of performance and well-being by learning about the human mind. This podcast is introducing you to some of the principles behind how the human mind works. It gives you uh, a flavor of our work generally that we do as an organization, and it feeds into a number of the other podcasts. It's going to be less practical than some of the other podcasts, so we invite you to sit back and relax in your listening of this podcast. We invite you to open your mind up and to listen from a different place. Not to try and make sense of this with your analytical, rational mind that maybe you usually use, but just to soak in the conversation that we're going to have and see what resonates for you. So you're not going to get a a three-point plan of what to do from this podcast, but we hope to entice you and intrigue you with some of the conversation. So as we're talking, we want you to observe the experience that you're having in the moment that you're listening. And our work is to work with you experientially in what's happening in the human experience that you're having in this moment right now. See, the way that the mind works is it works through thought. And psychologists say that we have something like 60,000 thoughts every day. So what's happening is that you're constantly just in a stream of thought going on. You're like a bubble machine. A bubble machine, when it's switched on 24-7, just produces bubble after bubble after bubble after bubble. Some big ones and some small ones. And that's what you're like, is you're a thought machine, having thought, creating thought. And as thought comes into the psychological system, it creates the experience that you have in every single moment. So thought comes in and creates the experience, and wherever thought goes, that's the experience that you have. So if thought right now is listening to me, then that's the experience you have of my voice and the experience that you get in listening and embracing what I'm saying. If your thought suddenly drifts off and you think about a loved one, then in the moment that even though you're listening to this podcast, in the moment that your thought drifts off and you think of the loved one, you can see that person right now and you can experience the experience of them in this moment and and have a, a, a really beautiful feeling. If thought drifts off and wonders what you're going to have for lunch or for dinner tonight, in the moment that thought drifts off, even though you're listening to me and you may have your eyes closed, you can visualize the steak that you're going to have tonight or the plate of vegetables or the hot meal or the cold meal all becomes, comes into existence. So thought is this incredibly powerful energy that's going on all of the time creating your experience regardless actually of where you're at and what you're doing. So another way of saying that, Martin, in a way is that this incredible, invisible, creative power of thought is is really the source of the entirety of the reality that we're experiencing in any one moment. And it can really look like There's a world out there that we are experiencing directly um, or that things might be occurring in the so-called outside world that are causing whatever our experience is, whether it be a felt experience or, or something else. But when we start to really explore this in our own minds and in our, our own experience, and I would invite our listeners to, to really try this on and, and see see how it shows up for you, is what we're suggesting is that we are never experiencing the world directly. So all we're ever experiencing is what mind has created via this incredible invisible power of thought in any one moment. And it looks and feels totally real to us, 
So we have a fully sentient, surround sound, real real feeling experience, but it's just a, something that's generated through the mind. So let me give you an example of that. A, a, a dream is an example of that. So you can go to sleep last night, as some of you will have done, and or many of you will have done, and some of you will have had dreams. And uh, you may remember that dream where you, you fell asleep and all of your senses switched off. And before you knew it, there you were in your last, I don't know, degree exam. And your mind went blank and you forgot everything and you didn't write anything for the two hours of the exam. And you wake up in a hot sweat. You're terrified because you know that you failed the exam and you didn't pass your degree. And in the moment that you're having that experience, you wake up panicking and you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to get to where I wanted to get and so on and so on. And then you wake up and realize it was all a dream. So this is just another example of the power of thought. Thought coming along and creating our experience, it feels in the moment that you were dreaming about that exam, it felt totally real. In fact, you woke up sweating. This is what thought is doing all the time. It's creating our experience that we then live within. I'm sure you can relate to many examples where thought is playing a trick on us. A mirage in a desert would be one like this. So we can see the water. We're, we're thirsty. We can see the water ahead of us. And we're convinced it's water and we're excited and we, we run ahead. And we're living in that reality that that's water. And then all of a sudden we realize it's not. Let me give a, practical, a more practical example of that in, in the work environment. There's someone in the office that, that I work in and they come in one day and I notice them, I, I, I lift my head up to sort of acknowledge them and say hello and I notice they turn away. And actually I notice them do it twice that day and so before I know it, I'm living in a reality created by my thought that that person doesn't like me. And before I know it, thoughts gone wild. A few days go past and before I created this picture in my head of why they don't like me or what could be wrong and so on and so on. And a week later, I end up chatting to them you know, in a bar one night. And actually, I realized that there was something else going on entirely and they had no issue with me whatsoever. Another example of how thought plays tricks on us because thought is constantly coming on and creating an experience, whether it's the dream or that situation or the mirage, thoughts coming along creating an experience of it for us moment by moment that we feel is totally real, but it's not, it's made up. Now, what we're talking about here, philosophers have been writing about for thousands of years. Ancient religions have been pointing at for thousands of years. And, and now the latest neuroscience says the same thing. And as Einstein put it, reality is actually an illusion, albeit an extremely persistent one. So in this short podcast, we simply want to point you to what your thought is doing. We simply want to point you to the fact that it's coming along and creating this world that you live within, this existence, this reality that you live within, the reality that you have about yourself, about your job, about your boss, about your, your wealth, about your house, about your family, about the market, about the economy, about the world, and so on and so on and so on. And it's all created by thought and that's what you live immersed in. Now, one of the wonderful things that can happen when people realize, almost spot the glitch in the matrix. So when you notice and truly deeply see the mirage in front of you, i.e. that even though my reality looks and feels real, it's not actually true. It's just a construct that shows up in my mind as my reality. When you see that, there's a huge freedom in that because it means that there's nothing outside of the mind, outside of experience, that has any causal power over what we experience and how we feel. And similar to when we have a dream that 
perhaps might not be a nice dream. We wake up in the morning. The minute we spot that it was a dream and it wasn't actually true, it dissolves quite quickly. It's not usually the case that we go around for the rest of the day kind of immersed and caught up in in the dream and worrying about it. And that's what we see happening for people that we work with when they truly see the illusion of the reality that they're living in things start to dissolve and there's really much less for people to do psychologically to manage or control their thoughts or their feelings. So in this podcast we're inviting you to look at thought and what it's doing for you and to you and in many respects thought will have worked really well for you until now. It will have helped you get to where you've got to in your life and your career. It will have helped you make friends. It will have helped you make money. It will have helped you live in a certain style and a certain house. But we're also looking at the power of the limitation of thought in what it's creating and manifesting that could end up in various situations having you be not the person that you want to be as powerful or as effective or as connected. And as Rena said, the more we realize what thought is doing, the less we can be gripped by it in any moment. Rena was pointing to something a little earlier when she said, it's all happening from the inside, not from the outside. So let me just say a little bit more about that. So we live in a world and a society where it looks like the outside is making us feel a certain way. If my team win the rugby, it looks like it makes me feel happy. If I win the lottery, it looks like winning the lottery makes me feel happy. Or if I have a bigger house or a nicer car, it looks like those are the things that are actually creating my feeling. It looks like if Brexit goes badly wrong, that makes me feel bad. It looks like if it's raining, that's making my feelings occur. But let's just look at this. How can those things be creating my psychological experience? That's not actually how the mind works. We say it's an inside job. So the only thing that's creating my feelings and my experience in any moment is my thought. So the more we realize actually what's going on psychologically, the more that we shift and understand the nature of thought and we can shift our relationship to it, the less we can be caught up in what the bubble machine is producing. And I think, Martin, to go on, to move on from there, it's it's really clear that this thing called the human mind is almost designed to to work intelligently. So there's this built-in natural design for the human mind to function well, for us to be productive, to be focused and energised, to have connection with other people, to have insight and wisdom and intuition, to be creative um, and to be in balance and, and in flow. As you said earlier, there are many sort of ancient civilizations and spiritual teachings and and other fields of study that have pointed to something beyond us as individuals, almost like a pre-existing energy and intelligence uh, that's responsible for all of life that almost in a way you could say runs the entire universe, you know, runs our our, runs nature, runs our the biology of our body, the, the thing that's responsible for growing a baby, for, for making all of those things work. And in a way, we can see the intelligence of that running through our psychology as well. So what we're suggesting is that we have access to this natural automatic state. And, and, and you mentioned nature, Renner. I, I, I think of nature, I think of the bird flying in the sky uh, naturally. It's not having to think about it. It's not having to work at it. It's not having to consciously think about its flying height or its wing breadth or anything like that. It's just, it's just operating. 
And it's clear to us that we have this state too. And, and in this various podcast, we might talk about the flow state. We sometimes call it the built-in design, the psychological design that we have to function well, is that we actually can operate in flow state really naturally and really easily and achieve amazing results. And really, we often get in our own way. We get in our own way because we get immersed in what thought is doing and what it's creating. If I get immersed in the thinking that I've got about myself or the thinking I've got about others, then that gets in the way of me functioning naturally very well. And through this series, we've got a number of more practical podcasts where we're sort of pointing at the same thing, but in a practical way. So we're talking about things like difficult people or, or confidence, for example, or how to avoid burnout. But ultimately, it all comes down to the, to the same thing, is deeply understanding more about our natural built-in design to operate well without thinking about it. Sometimes we use the example of the, the back office and the front office. It's like we've got this, this production factory that's really good at producing widgets. It's all lined up, it's all working well, and it can be left to get on with and function well and produce widgets. And in the front office, there's a boss that, that tries to get involved and tries to control things and manipulate things and worries about things and so on, and so on, and so on. And the front office is like thought. Thought trying to direct, or trying to control, or trying to worry, or trying to judge, and so on, and so on. And we've got this back office that Ren is pointing at, this natural built-in design, where actually if we let it operate intuitively, instinctively, cleverly, it's amazing what potential we can access. And Martin, just to say, just for those that might be listening, that might be thinking, well, does that mean that I don't need to do anything? And it's kind of just about sitting back and letting things happen and and just, you know, going with the flow. That's generally not what we're suggesting at all. And it is one of the questions that we get asked sometimes. It's more about having a respect for this, almost this wind that exists that if we sail, we get in our sailboat and we start to sail, what we find is we actually don't need to row. We can leave the rowboat to the side and we can rely on the wind behind our sail to really propel us forward. Um, and how that might show up practically is that there will still be things to be done and action for us to take and for us to you know, use our knowledge and skills that we've acquired. But there's a there's a deeper intelligence within the mind and within the system that we can start to rely on a little bit more. And and the power of that is is really quite incredible. And we're really just trying to give you a sense of something we normally cover with people over three days. So hopefully you're just picking up an essence of this. And some of it may not make sense. Some of it may sound like gobbledygook. But just start to notice and look at thought and what it's doing to you. And start to perhaps trust more in this innate design that we're pointing at. So this is our area of expertise. We study and explore learning about the mind from every possible angle. We study neuroscience and cognitive science and quantum physics and ancient spirituality and philosophy to really, really explore this thing, this simple yet profoundly complex thing we call the mind. And we study it because it has such a dramatic impact on all of our lives. It, it has a moment by moment impact for the rest of your life on everything you think and feel and experience and every way that you behave and hence all of the results that you get in life and work. It's so, so, so important. And we invite you to carry on the exploration. And, and if you are interested, we've, we've created more podcasts. We have a quality of mind indicator on our website, thepragmagroup.com. 
and we invite you to continue exploring yourself. Thanks for listening. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode. To find out more about our work with individuals, teams and organizations, please visit www.thepragmagroup.com or if you'd like to connect, email us at info at thepragmagroup.com. At